Mutun had just excelled in the in the national exams and joined the best university in the country. The bloke being lithe and supple in body physique, he was gifted in class, very adroit and intelligent. He was always the top student in his entire academia. His desire was was to be be a barrister. Even in debate clubs, he had profound knowledge and savvy epitomizing a good debater, true demeanor and disposition that mirrors solicitors who litigate in the courtrooms. Newton was in his right career path, Myambo was his alias name and moniker. In school, he had his stationery and other academic materials labeled and engraved Nyambo. His metallic key holders were engraved Nyambo, meaning the great in slang. During his four four years in the university, studying law, Newton seldom interacted with his mates when the varsity broke for long holidays. Alfresco wasn't his major. We believed he was an introvert. That was his life in the university for our years in law school. He was ever solely and during his avocation time, Nyambo read books and watched movies. He had a torrent of them, and he relished doing the two as his hobbies. He was a fervent enthusiast of the brace. He graduated with the best honors, first class honors in constitutional law, and he joined the School of Law to gain two year experience, just like it is mandatory for every law student. This is the level Mutin decided to show and unleash his true colors to the people. The perceived cool boy who had hibernated and lived a private life for four good years was a quiet bibulous. He started imbibing from one drinking spree to another. All the club attendants and coquettes knew him. He became more famous in intoxicating and reveling than the academician solicitor we thought. The astute and shrewd Nyambo luckily got employed as a barrister albeit his scoundrel and churl drinking habits. He became more of a hedonist and a more prop re of this world. When he received his monthly salary, he would sometimes profligate it within a day and start surviving on borrowings. That is how extravagant and wasteful Mutin was because of imputing and enlisting with poor friends who were vagrants and vagabonds and depended on him to buy the liquor in profuse quantities. Diambo was also a philanderer. He would be seen in the company of women. They all his drinking joints, Ibiza, pizzeria and high-end eateries where they would betake themselves courtesy of his money for he settled all their bills. The quintessential and sumptuous lasses were his company, Myambo had a good taste of selection when it came to toddies and willowies. He went for the zingy, snazzy, telegenic, bonny, dainty, comely, junoesque, statuesque, winsome, vivacious, sinusure, spiffy and pulchritudinous. All the aforementioned cogent of traits and descriptions of compliments stated were his endearing entice when it came to women. They easily won his heart. The same ladies were opportunists and would empty all the money from his trousers when he was tipsy. The brainy mutun. He looked puny and feeble to redeem himself from the imbroglio and conundrum he got himself into, it was a quagmire that had imputed into a Sisyphean. Him and liquor became inseparable, and at this juncture any effort to propel him from addiction proved a fiasco or debacle. The following day when he woke up after being drowsy, he would delve into his pockets to check whether he had balances to have a bottle at sunrise. He would leave the house ransacked looking for the balances, but most of the times upon waking up, he would discover his money had vanished with the twilight girls. There are times he would would visit brothels and meet his twilight girls who would take advantage of his overdrinking and drowsiness. Some of the taxi drivers who would drive him home would also take advantage of the poor Mdiambo for they would hike the fare just to fleece and swindle his money. They incessantly milked his pockets dry. When he was advised to marry or enter a canubial to make his focused a responsible man to play his duties to his family, impudent Nyambo would go berserk and insolent giving brusque and impertinent responses. He would be heard saying I'm not in a haste to marry, and in liquor, I found a companion betrothed fiancé he would baptize alcohol his better half. That became a daily routine to the giant academician and scholar, his sudden change of behavior mystified a plenary and plenitude of his neighbors who had seen his good upbringing with good parenting and grooming. They just remained bemused, befuddled, bewildered, gaped and goggled. They couldn't believe what they were seeing was the current delineation of the same Mutun who was a prim and conformist retrospectively. It was a dolorous and melancholic change of phenomenon. Mutun needed to be salvaged from the worsening situation. The habit had disintegrated and gone astray. A vile, disgusting, nauseating, ignominious and rife situation, 
for two consecutive years, that was Newton's lifestyle. His former classmates and university chums learned about his spendthrift habits in booze, and they paid him an impromptu visit. They found him at their cottage. His family had raised the issue and his close allies came for the intervention to extricate and emancipate him from the alcoholic servitude and slavery. They conceptualized a plan to help Mutin from clubbing, and since he was a good academician, they forced and foisted Mutin to start writing them academic contents after work, the time Mutin had been using to drink. The formulated plan was to mitigate Mutin's alcoholic intake. They made sure he would have at least two bottles of beer as he wrote the academic contents for them. They paid him for that. Like the sages say, change is ineluctable, this worked for Mutun, although it was gradual rather than rapid. Mutun reduced his dissipating habits and eventually halted clubbing. To beat his addiction, every time he felt the craving, Mutun would run to a nearby butchery for a cup or two of good bone marrow soup. The soup would halt his alcoholic craving. Today Mutun is an enchanted, exuberant and ebullient bloke who transformed. A chap who is today a public speaker helping people going through the same. His journey has been super duper and bonzer, rising from grass to grace. Him serving in the capacity of an eminent solicitor, he is also a prolific writer and author of inspirational and motivational stories. A transformed chap today.